Hey, my loves, how you doing? So, Spiritually Savage here. I'm still in hiatus right now. Um, until I get my own personal phone. I won't be posting any videos, but I'm still going to be making them. So when I do finally post them, I don't know how long it's going to take because I'm waiting on God. That's a whole other story. But um, until I get my own phone, I will be still making videos about how I'm getting through and how this journey has strengthened me in like so many different ways, but mainly learning, knowing, and recognizing how to control my emotions in not so not so cool situations I'll say but as I'm cooking I was thinking as I'm sitting here preparing um, I guess I can show y'all I gotta clean them though let me just take everything out of the bag yeah so right now I got my spaghetti squash Bam, look, I cut it in half, and I'm gonna dig the guts out. <laughs> this is not for children. If, if you watching my channel, I haven't been, well, have I been speaking? I, I would hope children watch, but I don't think this episode, they make grass. But anywho, I was sitting here thinking about the effects of poverty. Let me say that. I'm trying to get y'all to be able to see all of this. There we go. Poverty, I guess. Poverty and ignorance. And with those two things, we damage our children sometimes irreparable as you can tell by all the damage and spirit spirit broken people walking this planet and when I mean when I say that I'm not judging there's no judgment here it's just recognition it's just an observation and so that's why I've come to the understanding 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 that I hold people accountable for their actions to a certain extent because I also understand, understand, understand that they are not in control of themselves. And every movie we watch tells us that. Every movie. Because there's manipulation going on. And it started from birth, okay? It started from birth through no fault of our own parents unless they were awakened in their years unless they were made aware consciously aware of themselves as they were growing up and growing out then they really don't know they're just repeating a pattern they're repeating a generational curse they're repeating uh, a toxic behavior okay so when it comes to children, when Whitney said children are the future, she was not BSing. They definitely are the future. That song came out, I was a child, I knew it then. And as an adult with no children, I still know that children are the future. They really are. About to cut me up with orange just because I'm a little hungry. They really are the future. And so we must listen and pay attention to them. They are smarter and wiser than the adults are in some instances. Why? Be because they're still pure. They haven't been tainted by this world. But by the time you turn 13, that's when you start being held accountable for your own. I believe that's what the Bible says. It may be 12, but I believe it's 13. That by the time you are 13, you are held accountable for your actions, right? But they're still children. They still only have a certain amount of knowledge if they've not been tainted. The devil comes early for the chosen ones. Like a, 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 like a,
one of the ways that the devil comes is molestation. That's why there's a lot of wounded souls. And I understand, understand that because some people have a difficult time overcoming that. And I so get it and I sympathize and empathize. Right? But we still must listen to the children. We have to. And I remember that being one of my main things growing up. Was that no one listened. Even as a child I had something to say. I had feelings. I had thoughts. I had emotions. I, I had fears. I had a whole lot. I had the same thing any adult had. I did. I remember specifically. I remember my god sister saying to me. My sister. You know. Saying to me. Because um, I was singing a love song. I probably had to have been about like. 11, between 11 and 13, we was on a visit to New York. So I may have been, yeah, I, or no, we was living up there. I don't know. I was young. And I was singing this love song. And I always sang love songs. Always have, ever since I was a kid. But I was singing it with such earnest and with such emotion that, and I hadn't been in love, according to her, because she was like, what she know about that song? You don't know nothing. I had I hadn't even been kids. Right? But I sang it with such emotion. And I get it now. I understand why. It's because I, I feel love. I am love. That's why I can always find hope in any situation, no matter how dismal. No matter no no matter how bad. I can always find hope. And I say all that to say that the children have the voice of the future, literally and figuratively. They do. And you must learn to listen to them. You can't bark orders at them. And I know some people may, this may be a trigger for some, especially since I said I don't have any children. But step parents, also adoptive parents, don't have children either. So I don't think that negates my opinion. I don't think that cancels it out, the fact that I don't have any yet of my own, okay? So I say all that to say that when you bark orders at your children, when you, when you overshadow their thoughts, feelings, and emotions, you are literally teaching them to bow down to an oppressor because in this case you are the oppressor parents you are the oppressor okay you are the oppressor and so when your child grows up and I'm speaking from experience, understand, if you've watched any of my videos, you'll understand what a narcissist is, and how I was raised by one, and how that groomed me into a relationship with y'all. Oh, this is just mind-boggling sometimes. And so, if you don't want your child to grow up to be a muted adult and don't know how to fight for themselves and don't know how to fit for themselves and don't know how to speak up for themselves then keep ignoring them keep being a bully to your kids because you ain't doing nothing but turning your kids into bullies I'm, I'm telling you from experience and from my own experience and from what I see, that's how it happens. It's like bigotry breeds bigotry, self-hate breeds self-hate. And we have a duty to ourselves and to the next generation to heal that within so we don't repeat the same mistakes. I vowed I wasn't repeating the mistakes of my forefathers and foremothers. I'm not. I, I'm so thankful that God brought me to it and through it. I know I came kicking and screaming and sometimes he had to drag me. <laughs> I got dragged a few times because I didn't understand. 
I did not understand, and I mean understand, let alone inner or overstand. I just didn't understand because the spirituality component was not given to me. It was not taught to me. I was not taught about myself and how to seek out myself. And I hold no fault of that of my parents at all because they didn't even know how to do it themselves. I hold those responsible that, that, that gain off my energy. That, that's who I hold responsible. But anywho, you must listen to your children, my loves. Or you're going to raise insecure narcissistic children who think it's all about them and they get this and they do that and that's not very protect productive it's not you must listen to them they know themselves better than you know yourself because your brain now has been diluted your brain now has been messed up with whatever trauma you have been through, whatever issues you've had, all of that stuff. So it's time to listen to your children and get to know them. You'll know your child. You'll know if you pay attention, you'll know your child. You'll know their strength and their weaknesses. What are your child's strengths? Great. Big those up. Encourage those. What are their weaknesses? Everybody has them, even your children. As a young kid, my weakness was keeping my mouth shut and mad. <laughs> and fighting. Those was my weaknesses. I was good in everything else in school. My mouth got me in trouble. So on my report card, you always see A's and B's, C and math, but A's and B's. And then on the behavior side, I remember in New York, you had the, the letter system. So it was like... You, 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 <laughs> Unless I had Jim. <laughs> That's terrible. That's terrible. But that, that, those were my weaknesses. And the people I had around me at the time didn't understand my weaknesses or how to encourage me to strengthen them. There will probably always be weaknesses, but there's ways that you can combat them. I learned that on my own. I learned math was not my, So I learned to, to listen. Listen, and I wasn't a cheater. And I'm not saying I ain't cheat, but I'm just saying I wasn't a cheater. So I, I found help. I, I, I did what I needed to do because the people that I live with, they, they weren't capable. That's the, that's the word for it. They, they're not capable. Due to, due, due to their own struggles, they're not capable. So I learned it myself. I did. I had to. But... I suffer, and if you have children, you don't want your children to suffer. You may not like what I say, and I get it, I understand, I understand. A lot of people don't never like what I say, but it don't stop it from being the truth. And through my journey, I'm learning that no matter what, I used to not tell the truth because I felt like it would hurt people's feelings. But I realized and understand that there's a way that you can tell the truth without being belligerent, without, I can have a conversation. So I refuse now to argue. I'm not arguing with anybody. I refuse now to go back and forth. I'm not doing nothing more. I'll walk away. I'll, I'll walk out. I'll say what I have to say. If you want to argue, I'm walking. I'm too old for that, right? But listen, the children are the future, my loves. It's time that you start listening because they're more tuned into God than you are. Now, again, by the time they're 13, they start making their own decisions. So if they're making poor decisions, and, you know, and we've all done it, you know, no judgment. There's no judgment. It doesn't make you less than or more than a parent. It just means that your child needs more attention or every child goes through it. There's no child that's perfect. So... Listen to your children. I, if, if I could go back, that's, that's the one thing that I would want the people around me to understand. Is that you have to listen to children. We have thoughts, we have emotions, we have feelings. And we, 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 we think things too. And I'm, I'm talking about like we, like I'm still a kid, but I still feel that way. I still feel like that little girl, like no one listens to. 
And I have knowledge. I'm very smart. I'm very intelligent. I'm funny. I'm witty. But I realize it's not that they don't want to listen. It's because the truth that I speak, it touches their soul. And they don't like it. Because to them, it's judgment. But it's not judgment. I'm not judging. I'm just speaking my truth and what I feel and what I know. What I feel is right for me. And if it collides with someone else's belief because of what they're actually doing at the present moment or if it's something they've done in the past. And the crazy part about it is that when I speak truth, I speak things that I've also done. So I'm not judging. But when I say it, it comes off as judging. So I used to be like, you know, I've been through that. But then people had a problem with that. Like I'm trying to take the shine from them or whatever so I stopped saying that when I was just trying to relate you know like Oprah everybody say Oprah been through everything no she just had a lot of experiences and she took notes like I did I remember everything because through everything I always knew that there was a purpose and a reason for it and that there was a lesson even as a kid y'all tell you at the age of 15 years old 13 no it was 13 when we first moved to Georgia and I got into my first fight and I seen the girl the next day, that touched me because I actually blackened this girl eye and, I, and her eye was literally swollen and her mama took her to the hospital. That scared me. My own anger scared me. My own, literally. So at that moment, I knew that I, I, I changed. I came home and talked to my mom about it and everything. I did. Like, mom. So I knew then to check myself. And I've been checking myself my whole entire life out loud and to people. I take kind of things for myself. But it would have been a lot easier if I didn't have to reparent myself. So for your parents out there that are listening to me, take this as a cautionary tale. And if this is your first time watching my videos, my love, you need to go back and watch some so you'll see what I'm talking about. I am in the process of having to reparent myself. Yeah, I have parents, had parents, but I'm having to reparent myself because they were going through their own issues, their own things. And that generation bred this awoken generation. And that's how it was supposed to go, that's how it was designed. To be awoke don't mean that you're better than. To be awoke means that you know there's a deeper meaning to any and everything that goes on in your life, whether good or bad, negative or positive. There's, there's a deeper meaning, and it's up to you to search for it. To your children out there that's watching, cut your parents some slack. They got issues. We all got issues. And sometimes they don't see no other issue but their issues. And I'm telling you, some parents just think like their children are just, I don't know, they forget that they were children. I didn't forget that I was a child. I remember how it made me feel when no one listened to me. So that's why I do my best to listen. Especially the children. People don't see them until they go missing. Okay. When they go missing, everybody want to cry. And I'm not judging. But instead of having regret, start paying attention and spending more time with your children. You have to. Because if you ain't spending time with your children, there's other entities that's on. cut this video and then start another one because I'm about to start it. Hey, y'all, I can't wait. I don't like it. I don't like it. Even in hiatus. Alright, my loves, so let's get into this. My belly is satisfied. I got sweet peppers. I got 
jalapenos. I got orange, red, orange, red, hold on, orange, red, orange, red, orange, red, and green. I was looking for it. I was looking for it. That's why I got stuck on red. I got a half of one now. And I got some fresh garlic cloves. Fresh garlic cloves, fresh garlic cloves, some oregano, some oregano, some parsley, some garlic, some onion salt, mm. some, mm. for the meat, I got vegan sausage, vegan sausage, I got my tomatoes, for the sauce, I make my own made, homemade tomato sauce, y'all. I got some Italian herbs. You know, every black family got this Creole in their house, so I'm gonna throw some <laughs> And there's some cabbages, all Greek seasoning. I love it, it's really good. I'm still learning, y'all. And so I'm, I'm learning how there's a lot of salt in a lot of these seasonings. So I'm gonna get on my Tabitha. I've already started, but I'm gonna get on my Tabitha and eliminate salt from my seasoning. So, what else do I do? I got, well I got three different kinds of tomatoes, I believe, right? But, yeah, three. So I got tomato paste, bam. A little goes a long way. I got two cans of diced petite, and I even chopped them up a little more. Actually, this is my first time using the petite dice. I normally just use regular dice. And then I have tomato sauce. So, oh, I have some Louisiana seasoning. Some Cajun. Some Cajun. Hey. And some Creole seasoning. I like seasoning, can you tell? All right. I'll be back with part two. Let me go ahead. Oh, did I say onion? I think I did. Onion. And some onions. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and wash this all up. Part two. Mm -hmm.